Fantastic. Cool. So uh, today I'm going to talk uh, a bit about Slack, uh, which is an application uh, which I'm sure many of you will be familiar with. Can I just get a raise of hands, those who've used it before? OK, so say 18, 90% of the audience. That's great. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the rise of public communities, which is a bit of a hack when it comes to using Slack. It's not sort of the main use. Um, but I'll go through basically how it came about, how it differs from using other kinds of groups, um, other sort of community platforms. And then I'll talk a little bit about how uh, I created this group for London, which is the biggest uh, city-specific Slack group. Um, so for those of you um, who may not be aware yet, for the 10% who are um, not too familiar with Slack, it's basically a real messaging app, uh, which basically allows really sort of uh, fast conversations. So in, in essence, uh, if you think about the office environment um, and teams working together, it kind of replaces the email conversations that just went back and forth, where it's just one-liners. Um, so it kind of makes everything a bit more efficient. You're able to also sort of drop files, and it's got all sorts of, all sorts of integrations, which allows you um, to make sort of working together more efficient. It's very good for remote teams, um, and it's very popular, I think, particularly amongst um, sort of um, cutting edge technology, um, um, kind of the early adopters, basically. The, the, you know, the people who like to want to try out all the new tech all the time. And um, it's really, uh, it's kind of blown up in popularity. Um, actually, one, one thing I should have probably said, said at the start is, I don't work for Slack. I'm not really a Slack evangelist. Um, in fact, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, there are limitations to using this for public groups. Um, but as you can see, it's very popular. Um, Four million daily users uh, with an average of a couple of hours. Um, each user uses it, uses it typically for a couple of hours um, each working day. Um, so in terms of like using Slack as a community platform for general interest, um, before Slack or, you know, at the moment there are, there are, you know, a couple of other widely used um, platforms. Obviously IRC was kind of the precursor to Slack in terms of technology. Um, there are forums, uh, subreddits, and Facebook groups, and LinkedIn. Um, the thing that really makes Slack different is obviously this, it's got really great UX, great user experience, um, and that really, uh, that really, you know, differentiates it from, say, IRC, which is the same, similar sort of chat technology, um, but it really put, like, this really clean layer over it. And it gave all this functionality, this added functionality, and you can have several channels for the same group of conversation. Um, now in terms of turning it into a public community, like as I said previously, it was mostly meant for teams to use. Um, however, WordPress was uh, probably the first um, group to kind of use it in that sort of gray area where it was, wasn't quite sort of, um, you know, general interest. Um, and it wasn't, but it wasn't, you know, a small, it wasn't sort of like an internal team. WordPress is an open, open development sorry, sort of a, an open source community. And so they, they started using it, and obviously the WordPress community is, is thousands, uh, thousands of people. Um, so they, they switched over from IRC, um, and so they were the first people to kind of semi-hack it into being a public platform. Um, and you can see, like, on their website, they describe the reasons why they used it, um, some of which I've just mentioned uh, just previously. Obviously, being able to use it on... Um, uh, apps and it being cross-platform um, really gave it an advantage over, you know, previous technologies like IoT and Skype as well. Um, and then uh, basically you started to see these sort of public communities rise out of that. Um, the, one of the first ones being um, Hashtag Nomads, which is um, a group for digital nomads, in independent location um, workers. Um, and um, also, uh, there's this global startup chat that was started uh, for people, for enthusiasts of, um, you know, startup, um, you know, startups and new technology. Um, obviously, you know, early adopters to new technology like Slack. 
Uh, I was part of both of these at the start, um, which gave me motivation to um, start something that was more so sort of geographically um, specific. So I thought it was great. You know, I could see there were so many connections being made through all these other groups, but there was a lack of, uh, you know, where I was living in London. There, it was, it, I couldn't kind of say to someone on Nomads, like, oh, let's meet up for a coffee if they're, you know, most of them are in Chiang Mai or, you know, somewhere in Thailand or here and there. Um, and that's why I started Tech London. There are loads of other public communities as well. There's, um, for all kinds of interest groups, there's design, there's um, looking after pets, uh, you name it, um, uh, marketing, all that kind of thing. And these can be very useful for, um, say, if you have a product or service and you're looking to find like a community to engage with, um, to get feedback. Um, these are very good sort of communities to piggyback off. And you can find directories for these. So um, if, simply, if you, know, if you just Google Slack directories, you'll find several of these um, directories, will, which will give you access to hundreds of these um, different communities. Uh, on the other hand, there's also um, product focus groups. So instead of uh, taking a general interest group, uh, some uh, products have uh, decided to start their own sort of community-specific groups, like Buffer is a very good one. Um, they have a lot of uh, sort of question and answer sessions with experts. Um, there's a, and that's really good for sort of building community amongst uh, content marketers. Uh, people are really, you know, social media experts and that sort of thing. There's a lot of sort of interaction between the, the community. Um, same with Product Hunt, a lot of makers. Um, and it's an opportunity, yeah, just for like, you know, um, community members just to really communicate in real time, which, you know, Product Hunt didn't really have so much before. Um, and Polymail is an interesting one. Um, I spoke to these guys, and what Polymail is, it's uh, basically um, an app for, for email. They're trying to sort of disrupt email somewhat. Uh, but what they do is, uh, so when people signed up for their beta, when they uh, sort of launched their early product, uh, they got people to sign up with their email, and they also added them to a Slack group at the same time. And on the Polymail Slack, they're able to kind of let people know when the new, um, you know, there are new uh, iterations are coming out, new features, that sort of thing. And they're able to, oops, sorry, uh, they're able to get, um, you know, feedback real time, and really sort of engage their, and their users in a very, um, yeah, very sort of close, close way. Um, in terms of um, you know, using Slack, um, there are pros and cons. Um, so, obviously, as I've, I mentioned, a couple of these. You know, you you really build a sense of community between your members, and they they get this sort of sense of affinity um, that they wouldn't have if they've just had this one-to-one -one relationship with the product. Um, you get this uh, real-time feedback. Um, you can sort of identify community ambassadors who are really uh, kind of avid and you know helpful. Uh, it also, Slack allows multiple integrations, um, which you can use with your product. And in terms of you know, using it versus other sort of community groups, um, there's a lot lower competition when it comes to Slack groups. There are only, I think, over around 200 active uh, Slack groups, whereas, say, LinkedIn groups, there are like 4 million to choose from. Um, so it's you know, still early days, so there's lower competition. And it's free to set up. It's, there's a, an unlimited plan, which is free, um, although you know, with certain limitations, basically. Um, the cons to it is uh, basically, um, although it's great to have all these sort of early adopters of technology, and um, the, the problem is sometimes that kind of skews uh, you know, your, your demographic you're looking at there. You don't want your user feedback only to be people from Slack, because they won't be your average user. Um, it can be uh, kind of time consuming, running a community, getting people engaged, like starting conversations, etc. And in the early days, it can be quite difficult to build that early traction of people um, joining your, your group. Uh, they're all, there are also like documented, user, um, documented problems as well. Uh, scaling after a certain amount of users. I think over yeah, 7,000, 8,000 users. Uh, a couple of groups uh, previously had problems where even though Slack say it's unlimited, uh, sometimes their infrastructure can't really deal uh, with that many users. 
However, they say, like, since well-documented cases have happened in the past, they say that they've kind of revamped their infrastructure. And I've got email scraping by users um, kind of crossed out there because that was a problem that used to happen because uh, email addresses were public um, on the group. And so anyone could just download a list and start spamming everyone, uh, which tended to happen quite a lot before. But fortunately, they've added a feature where, by default, the email addresses are private. Um, so yeah, just moving on to uh, how I built the, the Tech London group. Um, so as I said, you know, I was sort of a, an early adopter to some of these online communities. And I saw the benefit, I saw the value people were getting out of it. And I yeah, basically thought this would be a great thing to have in London. Um, and it was a way to sort of bring the whole startup community together uh, to find out what was happening across town um, and to really keep sort of a, a pulse on the scene. So yeah, a year and a half later, um, we're now over 4,400 users. And most members, uh, we don't really advertise it too much because we're aware of the limitations uh, once we reach a certain number of users. So we find the most engaged users um, tend, to be, tend to join through word of mouth. And that's kind of a slow, steady growth that we're happy with. Um, yeah, as you can see, like uh, this is this is kind of overall uh, how people found out about the group. In the early days, we did um, kind of mention it quite a lot on a relevant sort of Facebook group uh, to do with London startups. And then these these um, uh, these percentages up here are all sort of um, directories for for public groups. Um, and the kind of, yeah, the testimonials uh, kind of tell the story of like how people have found it useful. Um, people have used it for uh, finding people to join panels for events, uh, found it to, like other people have used it to find out about new technology, um, and other people using it for sort of feedback and, uh, you know, trying to turn a concept into a prototype. Um, other people have also used it to find jobs, um, both sort of find candidates and also um, find the right job as well. Uh, in terms of uh, when we, you know getting people to sign up, there are a couple of things that we did uh, to facilitate that. So one of them, um, these are some of the tools we used: uh, Type Forms, Zapier, Stripe. Uh, the Type Form in, we used, we uh, basically asked for people to. Um, to say what their interests were. Um, and this directly correlates to the channels that we have within the group. So when they choose those channels, they're, they choose those interests, they're di directly added to those channels. And that's an advantage because sometimes when people sign up to Slack, they can't see uh, the, the channels tend to be sort of uh, minimized. So you wouldn't be able to, so some people might kind of miss it. So that allows them to go straight into the conversation and talk about what they're really interested in. Uh, that was kind of developed by uh, one of the developers in the community um, who, yeah, so we tried to sort of engage developers as well to see how we could sort of play around with it together. Um, the type form, we also, um, so yeah, just go back to, sorry, I should have said type form is basically um, a service which allows you to design really um, beautiful kind of sign up forms and uh, very easily. Um, and Zapier allows you to, um, is basically Zapier is a, another tool which allows you to trigger actions. So when someone submits a uh, form and type form, if they include their Twitter handle, uh, we had a recipe that would basically tweet them, use their first name, and say, uh, you know, receive your invite. We'll be, you know, sending you out uh, an email soon. Just click join the team, and that got a lot of uh, good engagement as well. Um, we did. Add a payment barrier as well, but just uh, just a token kind of one pound um, uh, fee, basically to, to sort of prevent uh, too many people coming in uh, advertising outsourced services that weren't really London specific. There were abroad um, that came across as a bit spammy and didn't really add too much value. Um, and uh, another thing that we <laughs> We did uh, initially to uh, kind of um, raise interest is there was a, um, this is just a bit, bit of fun. We basically had a, there's an application called Slacker 
uh, which allows you to impersonate famous people like, or silly people like Yoda or Darth Vader. Uh, so we had Richard Branson and Boris Johnson uh, join the chat and uh, you know say how much they're enjoying it. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the the end of my presentation. I know that was very short, um, but uh, I guess that gives you the opportunity to ask all the questions you like. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sometimes it's uh, kind of hard to please everyone. So some people, I mean, Slack can be quite a distraction. So some people would say, ah, oh, there's too much conversation. This is too annoying. Like, uh, I'm getting you know, distracted all the time. And other people would say, there's not enough conversation. So kind of hard to, to balance it out. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's up to personal preference, really. Uh, if, you, if, you don't, if you find it too noisy, just switch it off. Like. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'll tackle that in different, so in terms of sort of channel structure, uh, we generally went for sort of broad uh, topics um, rather than uh, specific ones because we found there was more sort of uh, engagement and rather than spreading the conversation too thin, we found uh, general ones worked more. Um, in terms of uh, scaling up, um, so like I said, there like, Previous groups have found problems when they've reached about 8,000 users. Um, Slack say that they, you know, they're still developing the infrastructure to cope with that amount of people on a free plan. Um, so, with that slow growth, hopefully by the time we reach that point, uh, you know, we won't hit those issues. And we can kind of, we're kind of, I'm kind of monitoring other groups to see when they reach those that that point as well. Um, what Slack has suggested uh, to other people who previously faced that problem is to actually split the group into, uh, into separate uh, groups, which I suppose may be something we could consider. Uh, we may just cut it off completely. Just like at a certain point, just stop sending out invites and just make, make it kind of members club only. Um, otherwise, uh, I mean, it's an opportunity for someone else to step in, say, because I'm not really like tied to Slack. I think it's a great product. Um, but you know, I have nothing against moving to another. You know, it could be a forum. You know, we could just go to a forum. But we, you know, we, we like the 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 UA, You know, the we like the product. But you know, if there's something similar that comes along new, there's no reason why we couldn't move over to that as well. Thank you. 
So do you mean like in terms of partnerships? And yeah, how does it work? Because I mean, I Um, I mean, I would say, you know, our, our, um, our ethos is, uh, how do I put this? It's like, it's not a zero sum game. Like, uh, in terms of like partnerships, like we're always looking for ways to like add value. Um, and it really, you know, if people come to us and say, look, we'd love to do this, like we're always open to that. We've done a couple of things, uh, together with other, other groups in London. Um, uh, generally it's like, uh, we usually, we've got sort of a moderation team, so it's not just me, it's like a whole group of people um, who kind of just come to kind of a consensus and sort of pick out the, the pros and cons of any sort of partnership, really. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Thank you.